Hello. Uh, today I'm going to discuss the economic reforms made under the leadership of Deng Xiaoping. In 1976, while the Cultural Revolution still raging on, Mao Zedong died. The Cultural Revolution was the embodiment of uh, uh, Mao Zedong's uh, radical socialist vision. And uh, having reached one extreme, uh, Chinese development was to turn around to another uh, direction, as uh, Lao Tzu said. At the time of uh, Mao's death, the Chinese system was built so much around the personality of uh, Mao, it could not continue as it had. At the same time, it was a system where political power was concentrated at the top, uh, which could be utilized for effective implementation of policy uh, priorities. In early January of 1976, Premier Zhou Enlai uh, died. Uh, Zhou's death uh, resulted in April 5, Tiananmen uh, incident. Uh, I believe you all know about the Tiananmen incident of 1989, but uh, there had been another incident back in 1976. The April 5, Tiananmen incident took place on April 5th of 1976 at the Tiananmen Square in Beijing, China. Uh, the incident occurred on Qingming uh, Festival, the traditional day of mourning. It was uh, triggered by removal of the displays of mourning by the authorities. The mourners began uh, gathering in the square to protest uh, against the central authorities. Uh, the Gang of Four, who at the uh, time ruled the country uh, in the name of uh, Mao Zedong, uh, ordered the square to be cleared by force. Uh, the incident uh, resulted uh, in the dismissal and the house arrest of uh, then uh, Vice uh, Premier Deng Xiaoping, who had returned from his long exile uh, in the countryside. Uh, Deng was accused of planning uh, the event, while uh, he insisted that uh, he came to Tiananmen Square only for a haircut. And uh, in September uh, 1976, Mao Zedong died. A succession struggle immediately began. Uh, before he died, Mao had uh, anointed uh, Hua Guofeng as uh, his heir. In October 1976, Hua had the radical Gang of Four led by Mao's widow, Jiang Qing, arrested, but Hua failed to hold on power. Uh, the third uh, plenum of the 10th uh, CCP Congress uh, rehabilitated Deng Xiaoping and uh, many others who had been persecuted during the Cultural Revolution. Although Hua remained nominal chairman of the Communist Party of China until 1981, the real power was turned over to uh, Deng Xiaoping and his allies. Why oh, Hua Guofeng failed? Uh, although Hua Guofeng was uh, anointed by Mao as his uh, successor before his death, he had many uh, weaknesses. Uh, first, uh, he had uh, junior standing in the CCP, Communist, Chinese Communist Party. 
and uh, he suffered from weak political uh, networks. And uh, as it turned out, he had a poor leadership capability. On the other hand, Deng had a strong support to, within the party. He was one of the senior leaders who had participated in the long march uh, along with the Ma. He also had uh, strong support uh, in the military. Uh, many of whose senior leaders were his comrades in arms. Actually, Deng could have avoided uh, Liu Shaoqi's fate during the Cultural Revolution thanks to the support of military leaders such as uh, Xi Shuyo, who was a Guangzhou military reason command, commander from 1973 to 1980. Uh, Wei Guoqing, who was the first uh, political commissar of Guangzhou Military Command from 1973 to 79. Uh, both uh, protected uh, Deng Xiaoping from Gang of Four after the April 5 Tiananmen uh, incident which was Deng Xiaoping's third purge. Deng also succeeded uh, in garnering uh, support among the uh, uh, cadres who had been uh, wrongly purged uh, during the Cultural uh, Revolution. Uh, in the end, the military delivered the coup de grace. Uh, the military, uh, Xi uh, Shouyou and uh, Wei Guoqing, uh, both of whom uh, supported um, uh, uh, Deng Xiaoping, gave uh, uh, Hua Guofeng an ultimatum to bring back uh, Deng or face a challenge to his uh, party chairmanship. Uh, Hua and Deng actually represented two different policy uh, paradigms. Hua represented those who had blind faith in whatever uh, of uh, Mao's deeds and words, while uh, Deng represented a pragmatic uh, approach. Uh, as it turned out, more in the party, bureaucracy, and the military favored uh, Deng's uh, uh, paradigm. Basically um, uh, speaking, Deng uh, could uh, win the power because he aligned with the uh, more or less conservative uh, uh, Chen Yun. So um, by aligning himself with uh, Chen Yun, um, he could garner the support of a state planning uh, commission, finance bureaucracy, and the proper uh, Genda department. Uh, pro that proved the key factor uh, in uh, Deng's uh, winning the power. The overall policy lines uh, were like this. Basically, uh, uh, in terms of the ideology, uh, Deng uh, was a pro um, pragmatist. So uh, he was ready to reverse the Cultural Revolution. And uh, in agriculture, as we will see, household responsibility system was adopted. And uh, in industry, a similar enterprise responsibility uh, system. Uh, and these policy lines uh, were adopted in the third plenum of the Central Committee of the 11th uh, Communist Party Congress. Uh, it officially ended the Cultural Revolution by declaring the era of turbulent class struggle was over. Uh, in the uh, third plenum, 
uh, Peng Douhai's reputation was restored. It also declared the closure of uh, cultural revolution. And uh, it made it clear that the party would focus on economic uh, development. Uh, during the uh, Cultural Revolution, uh, basically the policies that had been implemented uh, during the early days of a uh, great leap forward uh, were reintroduced. Uh, and um, in 1977-3rd Platinum distributed uh, nationally two documents uh, for discussion and the trial use. One was decisions on some questions concerning the acceleration of agricultural development. The other was new regulations on the work in the rural people's uh, communes. Um, and uh, in the third uh, uh, plenum of 1977 Party Congress, um, the farm prices were raised um, and um, the autonomy, uh, especially the autonomy of the uh, production teams were uh, pro declared protected from the infringement uh, by the higher authorities uh, in the commune. So basically, uh, the third uh, platinum, plenum started the process of uh, de-collectivization of agriculture. In this manner, the gradual dismantling of the communes uh, started. The specific uh, embodiment of the agricultural policy was uh, uh, the household responsibility system. Although the lands were still publicly owned, plots of land were uh, assigned to individual peasant uh, families uh, to farm. Uh, the families uh, pay tax, provide mandatory production quotas, and pay uh, fees, whatever fees they owed to the collective. And then the remaining product could be disposed of as they wished. They could consume, they could sell to the state, uh, and they uh, could uh, sell to others uh, in the market. Chinese um, have a saying, if the government has policy measures, the people have um, counter uh, measures. Uh, this may apply to the household responsibility system, which as we shall see, originated uh, in the peasants' uh, uh, surreptitious uh, resistance uh, to the uh, collectivization. As James C. Scott of Yale University has shown in his book, uh, Weapons of the Weak, and uh, several other uh, later books, the apparently powerless peasants uh, developed their own subtle arch of uh, resistance against all odds. In the Soviet Union, in Hungary, and uh, uh, other countries where agriculture was uh, collectivized, peasants resisted it. In the face of a collectivization, they hid grains and tools, and uh, they slaughtered animals uh, instead of sitting and uh, waiting for these to be taken away. 
uh, Chinese peasants uh, uh, did uh, the same things uh, when uh, cooperatives were being uh, created. As uh, Istvan Rev, uh, a historian of uh, Hungary, pointed out back in 1987, uh, which was before the collapse of socialism uh, in Hungary, uh, through endless acts of resistance, uh, villagers uh, in the countryside forced the regime to change. Uh, experimentation with and revitalization of the market, the coexistence of the small uh, and the big in agriculture, the convergence of a first and a second economies, the granting of consensus to uh, small-scale private enterprises, liberalization of the planning mechanisms were all, uh, in fact, the consequence of uh, continuous uh, atomized resistance on the part of the small people. Uh, peasants and uh, as other common people. Well, very similar thing uh, ha happened in China too. Uh, it appears that the um, collective farming was undermined by a myriad of dispersed uh, acts of resistance during the last years of the uh, Cultural Revolution. This um, silent, unnoticed structural revolution often involved, as we will see, the quiet acquiescence, uh, if not the active cooperation of local uh, uh, cadres. The uh, existing uh, literature of the uh, 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 collectivization in rural China uh, generally traces uh, the origin of the household responsibility system and its replacement of the collective system uh, to the audacious action of a uh, some peasants in Shaogang village, Fengyang County of Anhui uh, province. Um, according to this story, on a winter night in 1978, the 18 households of a production team in that village surreptitiously allotted the collective farmland to themselves for independent family-based farming. They were driven by the hunger and despair uh, that uh, they had suffered for an extended time under the collective uh, commune system and the difficulties they faced uh, in breaking the team into sub-team groups for more efficient uh, farming. The 18 families were allowed to keep whatever they produced after fulfilling the production team's collective duties in agricultural taxes and uh, grain procurement by the state. The next year, the villagers saw a miracle. Their crop output reached a total of 132,000 kilograms, four times the previous year's level. And they, now, with such success, they were encouraged by local authorities and finally endorsed by the central government. And uh, more and more teams in Fengyang County and the rest of China 
follow the Shao Kang's example of uh, uh, Da Bao Gan. Uh, literally, it means complete uh, allocation of responsibilities to individual uh, households in the following uh, years. Um, I am uh, very suspicious uh, of the figures of uh, agricultural output uh, before and after uh, Da Bao Gan uh, in that uh, uh, village. It is highly likely that the figures were deliberately exaggerated and even uh, fabricated, given um, the story's uh, propaganda value. The story uh, must have been uh, very useful for reformers to underscore the spontaneity and um, grassroots nature uh, of the uh, decollectivization uh, process. And therefore, uh, it was useful to prove or argue uh, the necessity and uh, legitimacy of the reform policies uh, in the uh, countryside. But uh, of two things I'm certain. The first is the fact that uh, there had been land reassignment to the individual families. Given the propensity of a peasant's uh, resistance toward the collectivization, uh, which I uh, discussed. The second is the fact that the new system of agricultural uh, production contributed to increasing output uh, substantially, if not uh, dramatically, as in uh, Shaokang uh, village. As you can see in the figure on the right, uh, per capita gra uh, grain output and food uh, availability uh, increased so much so that uh, the, by mid 1980s, the government uh, became confident of uh, food uh, availability. So the government uh, abolished uh, the compulsory procurement of a quota system and uh, introduced the contractual. Uh, delivery system, increasing the proportion of uh, marketable uh, agricultural outputs. Uh, before that, 90% of the outputs were procured by the government, but uh, with the increased output, it was a heavy burden uh, uh, on the government budget. Besides, there was no need for um, uh, stocking up uh, the large quantity of agricultural uh, outputs because now uh, agricultural uh, production increases. So after the, uh, the procurement contract system was uh, adopted, uh, roughly 30% of the outputs were uh, uh, bought by the uh, state. Uh, a material incentive based uh, system similar to household responsibility system was introduced for industrial uh, production. Enterprise uh, responsibility system also allowed the retention of a profit which was made from free marketing of the above plan output above quota uh, output and uh, after payment of charge for the use of fixed capital and, and interest on, uh, on capital. As a result, the total industrial output increased uh, uh, substantially. Uh, the government also uh, introduced, uh, adopted the so-called uh, uh, financial contract system. 
Now the management authority was devolved to a lower level of government, provincial and uh, local uh, governments. Uh, each level of government made an agreement with the next level up uh, to meet a certain income and expenditure uh, targets. If an administrative uh, uh, level generates additional revenue, this is shared with the next uh, uh, superior level of administration according to an agreed ratio set out in the budget uh, contract. So the surplus income was retained uh, at the uh, lower level. And uh, this uh, retained surplus income could be used to cover new investments or other expenditures uh, at uh, its own uh, discretion. Um, so what happened is this. Because they could re, uh, retain part of the profits, part of the surplus income, the local and the provincial governments uh, did whatever they could to mobilize capital and to uh, increase production and uh, to increase their revenues. Uh, as we have seen, one of the problems of the Qing, uh, China was the lack of uh, capital uh, for the government uh, with which the government could play the developmental uh, roles. Uh, now, that problem was partly solved in post-reform China thanks to the financial decentralization. Along with the internal reforms, China also began to open up its economy to the outside world. Uh, foreign trade uh, recorded uh, steady growth. In uh, 1986, China's uh, uh, trade uh, ratio, uh, which is uh, the sum of export and import divided by the GDP, topped 33%. Uh, considering uh, its size, it was very high. A uh, trade ratio indicates an economy's dependence on trade, but uh, it tends to be biased uh, depending on the uh, on its size. In the case of a smaller uh, economy, uh, it tends to be very high. <coughs> For example, the small Caribbean uh, countries uh, have a trade ratio uh, over 2,000% while the United States and Japan have a trade ratio below 20%. Uh, so uh, China's 33% was uh, uh, quite high, even uh, just after the eight years it opened up. And uh, in these years, China had to import a lot of capital and uh, capital goods and intermediate goods resulting in the imports exceeding exports. But as China became the workshop of the world, China came to record huge uh, trade uh, surplus. Development requires investment which in turn requires uh, capital, investment capital. In the early days of opening China, uh, 
China relied primarily on foreign loans. Uh, at that time, China was somewhat uh, wary of uh, foreign direct investment. It uh, may have feared uh, losing uh, the control uh, on its economy. Uh, but foreign uh, direct investment is uh, uh, not only a source of uh, capital, but also more importantly, maybe, an, an important source of technology transfer, uh, which is uh, indes indispensable for a um, uh, later developing uh, country and for industrial uh, upgrading. Uh, even in these early years of um, opening, you can see that uh, foreign direct investment was uh, uh, on the rise. Eventually, from the early 1990s, China became a sort of a black hole uh, of uh, foreign direct investment, absorbing most of the foreign direct investment destined for the developing uh, economies. All these combined, China recorded a spectacular economic growth in the last four decades. At the end of uh, 2014, China became the largest economy in the world in the PPP terms, as you can see on the right side uh, figure. Uh, even measured in the nominal terms, it became the second largest economy only after the United States. That's for today. And uh, I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you.